the bigger the commitment, the larger the hole. And I, I say that from 100% personal experience. I was the guy back before back before I got sober who I would just dig myself in a hole in terms of like triathlon and training and signing up for races to try and fill the equal size hole I had inside. But so many times we we try to meet the opposite ends of the spectrum in the middle. And what we're doing instead of setting ourselves up for success is we're creating so much distance between that it almost becomes impossible to travel. Happy Thanksgiving, buddy. Happy Thanksgiving. Greatest day of the year. Man, that's saying a lot right there. What about I know, I know. yesterday? It's yesterday's gone. What happened? Well, I mean, Duke lost yesterday. Well, I guess two days ago, uh, which is, <laughs> hey, listen, there's, what, it's one of the things I love about college basketball season is that early in the year, there are so many upsets like you see, you know, because let's be honest, Duke fans and UK fans are insanely obnoxious. Yeah. Yet, said already, and I love it. Uh, but hey, something yeah. else we love. A is Thanksgiving and B is you. And we appreciate you listening. Crushing Iron Podcast, 325. It is. Thanksgiving Podcast, 20, 325. Thanksgiving Podcast. Yes, we, I'll be honest. We debated long and hard, as in about seven minutes, on whether to <laughs> continue our two podcast a week streak that we've had going on for three years and i'm not gonna lie i was tempted tempted to go for the one take a little extra time for the uh for the family and unwind i thought it might be a nice uh gesture but i'm glad we're doing it we'll probably keep it fairly short so when we say 25 minutes we probably mean an hour and 20 because that's usually how we <laughs> how things go when we try to go short we usually go long uh but yeah if you're for some reason you are listening to this on thanksgiving or traveling or you're uh getting out and on the way to see family or friends we hope you uh have a, have safe travels have a wonderful holiday uh spend some time unplug and uh, do some things for yourself and as uh i'll speak for both mike and i that we're thankful for you we're thankful for our listeners for those of you that have been uh with us for as we said going on three years we we do our best to be consistent and and provide uh, a pretty steady and uh, informative podcast and if for some reason it's your first time listening uh we cover triathlon we cover life uh we don't cover just uh all things swim bike and run and, and only that in terms of you know technique and data and equipment and you know the 10 fastest ways to improve your transition to time at iron man wisconsin uh we cover it all um, and how it affects you and i both as athletes and coaches uh stories and uh, how other experiences we've had through working with athletes and then do the best we can to present it in a hopefully laid back relaxed informative uh conversational type outline and uh, we hope you get something from it and uh, again, as uh, as I said before, we're thankful for our listeners, and they drive us. They always give us good feedback or the feedback that we need to hear, and uh, we'll keep doing it. And we hope you all have a happy holiday. Yep. Thanks a lot. And we'll see you yep, Monday. Thanks. See you Monday. <laughs> Going to keep it short. Yeah. Thanksgiving, man. It's an interesting holiday for, like, triathletes. Uh you know, everybody's sitting around eating a lot, and I usually you're probably one of the, one or two of the only triathletes in the room, and everybody's probably looking at you like a Martian after your Ironman or whatever. Yeah, like, but you got you your gear that? on. You have your you definitely have your most recent gear on. If you are a triathlete, <laughs> for you, sure. I mean, it is like a no brainer. Maybe under the winter jacket, you know, yeah, pull it yeah. out. Oh, what's that? You're like, you know, you might have it on, but you're gonna like, ah, oh, it's getting kind of hot in here. Let me take off this. This turtleneck and this sweater vest. And, oh, oops! What and then the is little that? kids oh, like, Dad, God. what does finisher mean? I'm um, sorry, it's my Iron Man Wisconsin shirt. I didn't even know I had it on. I just <laughs> it just happens to be under here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did it. In case you were wondering, let me tell you what it is. It's a 2.4 mile swim. <laughs> ride or bike run. I know it's crazy. It's 26 to run like a run in a mirror. I know. I know. Pass the sweet potatoes, Johnny. And uh, it, yeah, it's insane, you know. But I did it. I finished. Um, it was epic. I had a great day. Um, hey, Sally, you know, lay off the stuffing. But yeah, you know, it's not a, not a big deal. You know, it's not much to talk about. Um, but yeah, I did it. I and did, then I did uh, it. 20 minutes later, people's eyes are glazing over and 
<laughs> Somebody <laughs> says, hey, aren't the Lions playing today? Exactly, as if the Lions like have ever been anything exciting to watch on, <laughs> on Thanksgiving, but they're, they're just ready for you to quit talking about cycling and spandex because they have no idea what you're actually doing. Yeah. Um, but hey, you know, it's it's a – some people will call it a conversation st- – starter a lot of people would call it a conversation ender um but yeah it regardless we appreciate uh you know we appreciate the fact that you love to talk about it and uh, we'll talk about uh, some things today I, have, I actually have a few kind of like a, a short outline semi-structured um i figured that was our best chance to stay on track and keep this you know semi-short but still deliver some information in terms of because you know what i find we I've been kind of berating the athletes that we work with to fill out this 2020 race calendar form and <clears throat> they're still not all in yet, but they got to December 1st, but I've had a bunch of conversations, texts, emails, and, and the like kind of going back and forth of what's good, what's not good. And it's interesting, like the, I was talking to an athlete yesterday that I work with who's doing the English channel next year. Yeah. And, and you know, and there's a bunch of other athletes that we work with that are doing hundred mile, you know, trail running races, fifty mile ultras, long bike rides, super long swims, and you know, their focus is a marathon or qualifying for Boston. And you know, I just I think it's a good reminder that like you, you know, as we're kind of joking on the, um, you know, about the, like the triathlon holiday conversation is that you know I what I love to do, and I hope that you know if you're listening and you consider yourself just a triathlete. You know, I would I would really consider you to go, to look at yourself differently and just consider yourself an athlete. And you know, I think that's one of those things that we kind of pigeonhole ourselves into and don't want to hop in running races or or cycling only events or swim races where we can really you know develop and hone in on different skills and get stronger and faster and kind of let loose and improve ourselves as as all around athletes. And I think a lot of triathletes steer away from that, you know, from open running races or again like swim and bike stuff or longer things because they might expose things or it's not as comfortable or they won't be as good. But that, you know, like looking yourself, looking at yourself as an athlete, I think opens yourself up to so many more possibilities in terms of increasing performance and the change of pace uh, and, and not, not structure, but just the change of kind of focus and doing things that are more relaxed and not so rigid that you're going to be afraid to like share with your, you know, your tri club at the weekly, like, you know, wind down Wednesday after your 20 minute run that you're afraid to like swap results with. Like this is something you can get laid back. And, and hopefully if you're listening, you know, either later on this Thanksgiving and you're doing like a 5k or 10k, like things like that are, are fun. And I think it's in terms of looking yourself as an athlete and how you're planning your year out, you know, you really need to, because again, that, that's what a lot of people are, I think struggle with this time of year. As again, we've had a lot of athletes that have kind of struggled with like where to go, what to do, what to focus on. And I kind of thought of it in a way, and, and you and I have talked about this a lot just in terms of where we are with what we do. And it's just like how much you should look at your training and your racing year as a, as kind of like a business and planning your year and you see a lot of athletes that will basically i think i com- i uh i commented in training peaks this morning or an email about a, an athlete that was questioning what to, what to sign up for and i think a lot of us have like make giant mistakes on commitment via registration and we we register for these races thinking that's going to make us committed but when the reality is we should find commitment and find what we can be committed to before we begin to register for things. And so I thought it might be, I was going to say, I thought it might be fun, but I think fun is a debatable and relative term. But if we, if kind of like broke it down into kind of like six steps in terms of like trying to create your, your best 2020 like triathlon business plan in terms of step one through, you know, six in terms of what to look for, how to approach things, how to set you up for success, short, sweet, simple, but hopefully again, as like, it's the holidays, you probably, a lot of athletes probably have family coming over, which means you probably want to go to the other room and avoid, you know, uncle Tim, who always has the same story to tell over and over again, or, you know, other members that might not be as fun, or you get a lot of driving to do. And it's a good time of year, I think, to make sure you're on the right track for this next year and not just start planning it, but beginning to kind of make the first steps into executing that plan as well. And you can shoot that down as you wish, and we can go on and talk about college football if you like. <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. 
Oh, I don't want to do that. I'm just. I would be excited to have a title that says Six Ways to Your Best." I know. <laughs> 2020. Whoa, 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 whoa! Let's slow down here. I didn't say Six Ways to Our Best. I thought you did. No, no. I said I said Six Steps to Help Prepare You for Your 2020 Triathlon Season. Oh, okay. Not, please don't throw best in there. Um, cause it is, <laughs> listen, we, listen as, as if you you know if you haven't listened to our previous podcast, fast forward to the very end where we specifically tell you to be motivated and excellent and committed, and look in the mirror and say you can't do everything. Yeah. So now, if <laughs> if we do if we put six ways to help prepare you for 2020, and it like doubles in our download pocket, are we going to shift gears? Here? Gonna oh, yeah. There's going to be 100 percent eight ways to do this. There's going to be six, eight, ten. You know, some version of, of a number that's going to kind of catch your eye. Forty point six ways to be your best Iron Man. I always want. Yeah, to write but that no, down. I think it, you know, and I kind of broke it down and and kind of simple ones. And again, this is this is just a way to think through things. And you know, most people most people their step one is pick your races, and that is almost always the wrong step one. And I would say step one would be evaluate yourself. And, you know, a lot of people right now want to be entrepreneurs. They want to start their own business. And I, I can't help but think like when I drive, like there's especially like on this this like strip mall that I drive by on the way to pick up paint from daycare. I look at these stores that are no longer a business and I think, what the heck was this person thinking uh, in terms of like feeling like this was like a – sustainable business model and again you never know it could have been there for like 30 years and finally like you know let's sell it but i think a lot of people think you know is in terms of like just like a business or even sometimes relationships and then signing up for races they hop in something super quick thinking instantly this is going to make this big difference without evaluating themselves and, the, and what i mean by step one evaluate yourself we've talked about this i think in a couple of preseason podcasts for the last few years is you need to evaluate yourself you need to evaluate your life and most importantly, the season of life that you're in. And the hardest truths you can you can figure out to set you up for success in this in this next year in 2020 is grading yourself on what you did and how you executed this last year. And a lot of people here's here's the kind of the rub with that, and I think why most people don't want to do it is because we always assume this last year was a was a fluke. Right, and so this next year we're about to set new goals, and we're gonna be more focused, and we're gonna take things differently. Whether it's you know you've been coached and things are gonna change, you've been self coached, and now I'm gonna figure out, now I'm gonna make more time, now I got it going, and then you're just doomed to repeat yourself. And whether it's you know you've gotten into new relationships, you started new jobs, your motivation is different, or you just look in the mirror and say, you know what, you know, Mike, I just haven't shown myself the ability to be consistent in order to drive the performance or the goals or the expectations that I ultimately want to get this year. So do I want to set myself up for success or do I want to set myself up for failure? Um, Because one of the biggest issues with that is, you know, I I was telling somebody this morning, it says, I always tell people that expectations or goals should come from proven patterns, not from hopes and dreams. And that's what this time of year is. Everybody, and again, I'm not not anti-hopes and dreams, but a lot of times they come with with no factual pattern that you've been able to prove. So look at your life, look at what you can do right, what you've done right, and set yourself up for success. And for a lot of you, that's probably going to mean not hitting that registration button for that full Ironman, or not racing five times a year, or choosing to race in a time of year that you haven't normally done because your your schedule with work or with the kids is is insane even though this race is like the one you really 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 want to do and it's a great location it might fall in the worst time of year for you it might be you know the end of your fiscal year for your company when you're just kind of you know pushed to the limit set yourself up for success look at yourself in the mirror evaluate this last year your strengths your weaknesses, what you did well, what you think you can improve on, and then the most importantly, the areas you think you can maximize going forward. Do all of that. Look in the mirror. You know, it's I guess in terms of like getting dressed in the morning as an analogy, look in the mirror before you get dressed. Don't get dressed and then go look in the mirror and then figure out, oh, this doesn't look good or I picked the wrong thing. Like, Don't register for races before you evaluate yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah, man. It's sort of like, uh, well... Before you hit send on that Ironman registration, it's kind of like uh, you know the idea of sending out a hostile email. You might want to sleep on it. Yeah, don't hit send as her. Just Medford. give it a night, at least one day. You know, 
48 hours. Give it 48 hours. 48 hours. All right. If it sticks, go back. So, so do that. And then once you've done that, I would say step two is is that's when you should begin to sketch out your 2020, you know, triathlon business plan. How am I going to conduct business? What do I see myself being really, really good at? Right. And what races do I think fit into that category? Because I'm all for athletes wanting to go after courses or times of year that they think might. Because like, I think as athletes in Type A individuals, we look for things that give ourselves an opportunity to prove ourselves wrong. Right? You know, we, we've struggled in with hills. We've struggled with open water. We've struggled with this race and this time of year. And so we have to keep going back and proving ourselves that we can do it. And so many times we end up kind of banging our head against the the wall trying to fit, as we kind of said, I think this on Monday is like trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. The timing, the timing doesn't fit. The skill set doesn't fit. Let's rethink this. And instead of trying to, you know, prove yourself wrong, try to prove yourself right and pick races and sketch a season out that makes sense to you, especially if you're self-coach. You don't have a coach that'll, that can do it for you and kind of take the reins in terms of periodizing your schedule, telling you what's not smart or what is smart, what races to train through, what races to taper for, what should be your big focus. Is this race complement what you want to do? Is it a good time of year? All those questions, you're sketching out your, kind of your business plan of when to execute what, how you're going to execute it, and the work that needs to go in to doing it. Again, like there, there needs to be like a tremendous amount of research that you do within yourself. So you, you'll say, you'll say you're the product. If we're talking like as a business, you are the product. Research that, do everything you do, strengths, weaknesses, everything you do to produce that the best of your ability. And then I guess from another business nice point, doing kind of your outline would be more so like market research. Where can I, where can I fit this and apply this to uh, fill needs to get you know get new customers? But as yourself as like a triathlete, like where can I be the most successful? You know, do you want to be a product or a triathlete for everybody in every race and every time of year, or do or do you know that you know what? I'm not. For, this isn't for everyone. I'm not for every race. I need to be specific. I don't need to go to you know triathlon trade shows and tra- that are that aren't my target audience. I need to be specific in what I do. Spend the money you know appropriately, i.e., your training hours, and be specific in what you do. Mm, that's like sim- simplifying it down, man. Yeah, it's like, you know, there's many different shows and opportunities and possibilities are endless, but you have to be able to, I mean, this is all, back to the quickly, the last one where you said hopes and dreams. I think a lot of us kind of use that hope and dream hook to sort of motivate us, you know what I mean? And there's Mm -hmm. there's like a little bit of a delusion there. And I guess what you're saying is like, let's look at it from a realistic perspective and just go about it smart versus just sort of like always kind of throwing out this big hope and wish and letting that be the motivator when it's just kind of false dude the the bigger the commitment the larger the hole Mm. i've always said this and i believe and believe and i i say that from 100 percent personal experience is the I mean you know this you know oh, like know. than anybody you know you know like I was the guy back before back before I got sober who I would just I was I would just dig myself in a hole in terms of like triathlon and training and signing up for races to try and fill the equal size hole I had inside for you know depression anxiety feeling like a terrible person being depressed all these things and 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 shame and guilt so the the, the worse I felt the bigger it had to be. You know, and so I think that again, it, to not to that like deep, you know, somewhat sad, you know, extent for for our listeners. It's like, but so many times we we try to like do the the opposite. We try to meet the opposite ends of the spectrum in the middle, and what we're doing instead of setting ourselves up for success is we're creating so much distance between that it almost becomes impossible to travel. And so if you're like struggling with motivation or you're struggling with being committed or all your friends are doing this or you're – you are that person who has consistently every single year signed up for a race, signed up for races and just can't get it together to do them. It doesn't mean you need to go bigger. It means you need to go smaller or you just need to get going. And that is the biggest thing. Just get going. 
move in the right direction, just be consistent, prove to yourself that you can be consistent and you can be committed and you can stay. It doesn't have to be like motivated to the point to where you're sharing some, you know, um, some, you know, 9,000 liked, you know, Instagram image every day that has some like moving quote. You don't have to be that motivated every day. You just have to get up and get it done. Because training training isn't an Instagram quote. Training is just like getting the stuff done that you really don't want to get done all the time, but still making time to do it and knowing that it's a, it's a part of the process. And so if you're trying to overcompensate with races and distances or frequency or magnitude, like take a look back and say, all right, what am I really trying to overcompensate for? You know, like the way most of us think when we see somebody with like a Ford, you know, 950 with 88 inch tires souped up with like a 48 inch lift and you're like all right all right i get it and out pops up like a five foot one dude with the cowboy hat on you're like all right i get it that makes sense to me but so just just think through it and be objective and then that kind of leads me to the third the third step is is get feedback get feedback from someone you trust whether it's a, whether it's your spouse, which is let me let me just say this right off to get go <laughs> for those of us that are married mm-hmm. or with the same other, if you don't get feedback with your spouse before you commit to something, let me put let me say this very simply, <laughs> <laughs> you're an idiot. Okay, <laughs> you are an idiot. Your spouse will make or break your training experience. They can be motiv- They can motivate you. Or they can make you feel so guilty that you won't want to train. So even when you are training, you're feeling guilty for being gone. So you're not even being present. So step one in getting feedback, ask yourself, am I married? Yes. Ask your spouse. Am I in a serious relationship? Yes. Ask your, ask your significant other. All right. Do those things. And then get – so because to be honest, like, if you know – Get, just get that kind of feedback that matters because they, especially for your spouse, they can help you figure things out. If you have kids that are like remotely capable of having a conversation and being engaged in where you want to go and what's exciting for them, get your kids involved. Like some of the, like the best athletes that I work with in terms of, of being consistent and getting to races, like I don't mean best like performance wise, I mean like best as in like being consistent and always kind of feeling like they're set up for success and have a really good family interaction, they always loop their kids in. It's like, yeah, my kids are so excited to go there and I actually like kind of scrolled through like the Iron Man website and let my kids pick out um, you know, what what would be the most exciting place for them and where they want to go and what the city has to offer. And that helps I think also like if you have to spend time away from them, think all right, the experience that we're gonna have as a family is going to be so much fun. This is all worth it. If that's not the case, get feedback. So if like if you're in a business, if you're trying to create a business, you've evaluated yourself, you set your kind of your business plan up, now just don't go do it. Okay? You can't just walk into the bank and be like, all right, I've got this plan. I think I can sell, you know, eight balls. You know, not like the eight balls like the drugs, but like eight balls like the, you know, the old school things where you used to shake and ask a question, and they're like, Yeah, not oh, magic. today or not a chance, like magic eight balls baby i think i can sell multicolored customized magic eight balls with you know your own quotes inside which actually now that i think about it is a you know we might want to talk about that is <laughs> is uh you know you want to get feedback you want to ask somebody who's been in the industry you want to ask a business advisor a cpa somebody who has ad, has experience or knowledge and who can be objective because if there is one thing that most triathletes are not it is objective when it comes to their own training, their own racing. Are they overextending? Are they pushing themselves too much? Are they committing to the right races? Are they setting themselves up for failure, or are they pushing themselves towards success? So do all the do those first two steps, and then get feedback. And if you have a coach, and you've like for the athletes that I work with, they filled out like a form. If I don't think it, or if I don't like it, then you'll know. Uh, just a heads up, you'll know I don't like it, um, and you might just not find it in Training Peaks. Um, <laughs> but get feedback. Don't just don't just do it blindly. Don't say, oh, you know what? Like, there's nothing. And I think the biggest reason most people don't like getting feedback is because they don't want to hear that they might be wrong, or that or that this idea might not be a good might not be a good one, and that you're. I know you're trying to sell five different, you know, five different products within this line. But maybe you should, you know, maybe that's too many SKUs. Let's go down from five products to three. 
because we're probably going to be sitting on, on too many of these. It's too many SKUs, too many products. We're kind of diversifying ourselves too much. Let's just stick to like two or three and do them great. Let's not overextend ourselves just to do more because and be just kind of okay with five products or five races. Let's be great at two and deliver the best experience and the best product and have repeat customers and do the best we can with all those. And so for, for triathlon, if you're over committing and doing five races or, or, or races that don't make sense in terms of complementing themselves with each other, then scale it back. But again, we, we, we rarely ever like to get give or, or request feedback because we're afraid that we may have been, just been like driving down the wrong road. It's like it's like trying to find your way to your granny's this weekend and you don't want to turn your GPS on and, you're, and you're, you know, significant other's like, babe, turn the GPS on. Just turn it on. Do you even know where you are? I have no idea where I am, but I'm pretty sure I know where I'm going. But you don't want to, you don't want to turn it on because the first thing it's going to say is rerouting. And yeah. it's going to turn around, drive 25 miles down you know, Highway 70 and get back on the interstate because you're headed actually towards Louisville and you shouldn't be headed towards Atlanta. So like, that's why we don't like to, to get feedback because we're afraid and we have to go back and rework it. But that's okay. It's better to spend more time in preparation than it is spending more time trying to fix a problem that you could have avoided. Yeah, man, I, I'm like the poster child for that too. <laughs> I really am. So I get that, I, but it, I really got. I've gotten to a point, and you know, because I'm in a, I've always been sort of in a creative field too. So the last thing you want to do is ask, you know, feedback on your brilliant idea or your brilliant, you know, thought process. And it's like you've kind of cooked this whole thing up in your head for days and weeks and months. And now it's like, you know, this is the right thing and you know, it's great and everything like that. But if you walk in that room and say, hey, honey, I'm thinking, here's my plan. And they're like, what? That's ridiculous. That's like the biggest fear there is. And I'm sure that happens with races. It's like, you know, I mean, triathletes are sitting on their trainers for four hours going, yeah, I know I've got this plan all set up or whatever. And the last thing they want to have is opposition. But Mm. it's like a really smart and mature way to think about it it's like why don't take it as sort of a a personal assault if 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 somebody gives you feedback and i think that's a big part of growing up and i'm getting there i mean it's 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 yeah it is it's like we we're so afraid that we're gonna be like you know trashed or our idea is gonna be terrible but the fact is like if you don't ask anybody then you may get so far down the line that you're also going to be like, I've come to the point where, you know what? I've committed so much. I'm just going to go through with it anyway. And then that's even, that's even the worst, you know, the, the worst thing you can do in terms of like being so committed, even though, you know, what's wrong. You're like, I'm just going to see it through, you know, I, I just, I got to go all the way. And so, which is, it's a great idea to, to ask, to make sure that, you know, it, inquire with other people or like you said your coach or your training partners whoever like does this look like a good plan does this does this look like something i can do does this suit my abilities the best is this this is gonna be something i can do really 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 well and then and then go from there and so once you've done that once you've done step three you've gotten the feedback now it's time to and you and you fix things and you've adjusted things whether it's your expectations whether it's your racing whether it's the time commitment or scaling back now it's time to create that plan the races, the periodization. When am I going to be in base phase, build phase? When am I going to be peaking? Is this a race that I should train through? Is this not? What what markers do I need to look like as like a closer race day to know that I'm in the right spot? And that I think is is the part that again is can be can be more overwhelming in terms of the stress that, especially for like the self coached athlete, is like to to create their own plan and know that it's right and then just stick with it so like imagine creating your own business plan and then you're done with it you submit it to the bank you get your loan and then you can no longer change it you can no longer see it again and you just have to kind of like think that it's okay but then if things go, don't go awry or the things do go awry and, and maybe go wrong then you still have to stick with what like the next steps where you can't go backwards you can't take a break you can't maneuver things around you can't adjust your your vision or your goals you just have to keep going and that leaves people feeling lost but the biggest thing is especially if you're making your own plan is created and this is kind of like step i guess four four and five is create your plan and then 100 percent commit to working it 100 percent commit to working it because 
one of the biggest i think this this goes for um this also goes for athletes who are who who have a coach and like one of the biggest struggles i think is a uh, you know that i think athletes tend to i don't want to say forget but that they they might find isn't as big of a deal is that if a training structure has been created or a training plan or a week whether it's a plan or it's been customized if you deviate significantly from the plan that your coach gives you or your plan that you've written has laid out for you the second something goes wrong you're in trouble there's no roadmap to look back on there's no way to find where the wrong turn occurred but if you stuck to the plan and it failed you can correct course so much easier and so when you just kind of like flail around nilly willy or as i described earlier in an email like you seem like like a lot of triathletes this time of year seem like they're blindfolded swinging at the the racing pinata they have no idea what to do they're blindfolded they have no direction to do they're just kind of swinging and hopefully they knock it out of the park but guess what even if they knock it or even if they miss it they're blindfolded so you have no idea how you got there or how to even do it again but the main thing is and i I can't stress this enough is it when you for the self-coached athlete make a plan that you believe in structured in a way that you are 100 percent bought into it and work it don't get distracted don't you know even even to an extent don't listen to some podcast. like even if, if if you listen to our podcast and it says like go a different direction if you've done something consistently for like 20 weeks and you feel like it's kind of working, don't just deviate. Because if things go wrong or things didn't, like you can't go back and find something so consistent and, and done with such a length of, of duration and consistency and, and, and being exact and precise to go back and look, all right, you know what? I know exactly where I made the wrong turn. So you know what? Let's go back and let's fix it again. It's it'd be like preparing, like you know, a master chef or a Michelin star, you know, a chef in a restaurant. Like you know what? I'm going to cook all these meals, but I'm not going to write anything I'm doing down. Nothing. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. And all of a sudden, you're going to make like this really crappy dish, and you're like, all right, that was terrible. But I don't know exactly how much it did. So you know what? I also don't know how much to put in this next time. So I may just make it crappy again. But if you write it down and it's kind of good and you're like, how oh, that a little bit too much of this, then you'll know exactly how much you put in it. So, you know, maybe I don't need, you know, three tablespoons of cayenne. that are way too much heat. Maybe I just need a tablespoon and a half. You can go back and exactly fix it. Or even better, once you get it perfected, if you've been eyeballing it, kind of going on heart, you're like, all right, that was perfect. Now let me see if I can go back and, and make it perfectly, and now I'll write it down. No, it's never going to work. You're never going to get it exactly right with the pinch here and, and, a, and a scoop here and a level off here. You want to be able to go back and look, all right, I wrote down I need two pounds of butter, you know, a half pound of sugar, you know, especially for us Southerners, you know, two pounds of chocolate. You know, now we're getting started with some wheat bread. You know, it's like we, you want to know exactly how it's written down. And that's the only way, if you're trying to create a recipe for success, is to write it all down and then stick with it. Cook the whole meal, heat it up, deliver it, put it on a plate, present it on race day, and then see how it tastes. But even if you get to like through five steps out of eight and you're like, ah, but maybe I should heat it for like at 450 for 20 minutes instead of 400 for 35 minutes. Don't do that because you're now you're never going to know what it would have been like if you stuck with your plan. So, you know, step four, create your plan, be confident in that plan, commit to it, and then work it. And then obviously the sixth one would be go execute your plan. Go to race day, look back, look, be able to look back and know that you worked your plan, you created a plan you were confident in. Because again, like I think that's one of the biggest – I don't say downfalls, but one of the biggest struggles that a lot of athletes have is they go into a race having little to barely any confidence that they've worked the plan that is best for them or that they did a great job working it. So they have no idea because I'll know, I know from experience as a coach, even with athletes that work a plan that they've, that I've laid out for them, they don't miss any sessions right they've been consistent for like 12 to 16 weeks they put in more training they have their entire lives you know what they're still left with on race week uncertainty they're like i don't even i don't know how i could do this Mm -hmm. so i can't imagine what it might be like to have like zero faith or as 
we talked before having so much faith, having to have all that faith in yourself to do it and nobody to bounce things back on, nobody to go back to step three and get feedback on. But the biggest thing is go execute your plan and then you kind of revert back and go back to step one and kind of like a, you know, a, a, mini, a mini outline throughout the course year to re- reevaluating yourself or you know, I guess better put in terms of like making the analogy for business is like go back at Q3 and look how Q1 and Q2 went in terms of like the first two quarters of the year and evaluate it on these steps you know, one through six and think, all right, well, if you want to finish the year out, we did steps one, two, and three and four right. We, we evaluated ourselves, we, we you know, sketched out our plan, we got great feedback from our customers, we, create, we created our plan you know, four, but then our biggest downfall was step five, we just didn't work our plan. You know, we had a couple weeks here, we didn't execute, we had a couple weeks here, we took time off, we cut workouts short, we just were kind of lazy, or, you know, maybe we got sick. So do we need to reinvent the wheel? No. We just need to work our plan better. You know, and, and, and we don't have to kind of start all over, we just need to go back to step five and think, all right, I just got to work my plan better. That's all I really got to do. And then, now let's see where we're at, and then hopefully have a better, you know, Q3 and Q4 and finish out the year, year 2020 with a bang. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, as you were saying all that, and then you, especially when you mentioned go back and go through it again or whatever, I was thinking about it in terms of like race week or a couple of days before the race to kind of almost do this in a mini sort of way too as a, mm-hmm. if it's your A race, kind of like if your ankle's tweaked or whatever, kind of evaluate yourself again, uh, you know, sort of sketch out your triathlon race plan, you know, because we talk about ra- you know setting up race plans as well, and it has to be all sort of cumulative based on what you just went through and maybe you don't nail certain things or whatever the case is and you create that race plan the same way it seems like that would make sense that's that's a great that's a great point and and even to like in terms of like reviewing at race week is is you know being confident in if something like let's say you had you know let's say you had a bad end to your q3 but you look back at the beginning of your of your third quarter and all of Q1 and Q2 and everything was great, don't just assume that everything's now about to go to shit. You know, like, don't say, oh, you know what? We've had a bad month of, you know, sales or, or, or you know, of whatever and think, oh, you know what? We have to, let's just, let's take everything off the shelf. Let's sell everything at 50% off and let's recreate everything and let's panic. No, it just, you might just be having a bad month. You know, like, don't go back or, or if you're in race week or taper like you might just be having a bad week don't forget all the great things that you've done or accomplished in the training that you did and the consistency and how healthy you've been the fitness that you've gained and how far you've come don't let don't wipe all that out because of one week you know like you like you see businesses do it all the time they just like freak out and think oh we're getting left behind we have to change everything you know we're like wait dude you've been making like a steady profit for like the past 10 years you know, like, why do you need to go from steady 10% increases to trying to make a huge jump? Again, like going back to triathlon Stock training, holders. it's like, yeah, exactly. It's like your Facebook who, friends, who, <laughs> your Facebook friends, like who are you trying to impress? Like, or from a training standpoint, like, hey, buddy, you've been improving by like, you know, two to 4% in all your times for the past five years. And all of a sudden you had one race where you may not have, because let me, let me, let me breaking news here guess what you're not going to pr every race you ever do period no one ever zero no one is ever yeah i know right and guess what if you don't it doesn't mean you're getting slower like it's impossible to pr every race but you'll see athletes who will you know improve 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 for years and years and years and then all of a sudden they have like a couple races where they haven't seen as much improvement as they want to um, dude, now we, it, it's time to change. I've got to change things up. Things, things need, I just need to change things up now because I just PR, but it was only by like, you know, five minutes versus like 20. But as you continuously like increase and increase and increase, like if you look at like the margin of sales for like some of the biz- the biggest businesses and the companies in the world, they, I think, I think I was reading something like Walmart. Like their their bottom, like their their percentage of profit is so small, but they sell so much that it accumulates to so much money. You know, so you could be the company who who sells like you know one hundred billion dollars a year, and your you know profit is like you know ten percent of that, or 
you could be the company that you know sells like you know 30 billion but your profit margins like 30 percent you know so it's like it's all about how you get there and how much you feel like you're you're earning but don't just in terms of training but just don't go back and like reinvent the wheel just because of one one day or one quarter you know and, and i think that a lot of times we we're so obsessed with better and better and better and all the time and all the time that we just we kind of get lost and jump to doing things that may or may not be um you know, may or may what's actually best for us. Um, but it, it's always great to review those kind of things and remember, and and remember how far you've gotten and what got you there, and don't just, you know, totally abandon what's been proven to work for you. You can tweak it, but you don't need to just throw it out and start and scrap it and start totally over and rebrand yourself as a business because you had one, you know, flat line year and the previous fifteen were all successful. Mm. Yeah, man. I'll even take that a step further. Like pre-race is one thing, but even like we talked about it many times inside a race, sometimes, you know, people have a tendency to throw away the whole game plan just because, you know, the swim didn't go like they wanted or whatever the case may be. But you have to adjust within the race and kind of look at it like, okay, you know, I, I do a lot of writing and a lot of times I'll sit down with like, you know, junk in my head and I'll be like, man, this is not good. And then I'll, as I go and start thinking about it and flush it out, I, I can start seeing like, oh, I was just stuck on like 10% of bad something. And there really is a lot of good stuff here happening. You know, so like your race may seem like it's going to crap, but there's still a lot of good things happening. And you just have to sort of get out of that headspace. I like that. Yeah, no, it's it's so, it's so true. It's But we, again, like that's that's how a lot of athletes are wired is, is to find, is to search you know, search far and wide for what they're not doing right. Mm, yeah. And then make changes. And sometimes those changes are going to be a detriment or a, have negative impact to the things that you're doing that are positive. Yeah. You know, and it's just, it's, it's about looking at it, you know, um, you know, from 30,000 feet versus three, Yeah. you know, and, and, under, and understanding how everything affects each other. Yeah, man, it's like, the football analogy is a really good one here too. How many teams like fans will be like in the first quarter just freaking out? They're doing this team is just doing nothing right, but it's a game plan. And by the third or fourth quarter, they're just rolling over the other team. It's like mm -hmm. just because your first couple splits in the marathon aren't maybe where you hoped they would be, that doesn't mean you can't turn that around. And I think we all get delusional about the idea of like, well. If I can't run the first five minutes of this mar or five, first five miles of this marathon, well, I'm screwed. But maybe, maybe you're not. You know, maybe there's something deep. It's an amazing way to think about things. Like people can't necessarily juxtapose it in their head that they can actually get stronger after all that. You know, why not? You've done a lot of training. You know, or you know, it's like. Um you know, just because it's not going well right now doesn't mean it's not going to go well in just a second. Yeah, yeah. You know, and but yeah, everyone wants to jump to everyone's everyone's super impatient. We have to have results now. I want it now. And if it's not showing its face now, then I have to change it. And that's a quick way to actually never get results. Yeah. Because um, you're always chasing a different result and you have no consistency and nothing to compare it to. Um, so you have like zero numbers or no data to actually go back and look and seeing if you are improving. You're just chasing you're chasing results and you're basically like a dog chasing its tail. Um, but yeah, it's like, you don't, <clears throat> it's the same thing. That's like, where it's so hard for people to wrap their mind around is, you know, saving 10 minutes on the bike might give you 20 minutes on the run. People yeah, can't wrap their mind around that. You know, it's a, but it's, it's about investing smart and trusting your training and, and knowing that, you know, dad is going to allow me to run past everybody when I, when I need to, or an athlete doing Ironman in Arizona. And she was like, that plan was perfect mile one everybody was passing me or not mile one lap one because arizona's a three lap course and she's like lap one everybody was passing me and by lap three i was the wind was so strong i was passing everybody while they were standing still and just to have like the patience to to do that and to stick to your plan and to not you know rush self-judgment on yourself and your ability or your your commitment or have you overcommit or your um, or your training plan like you just got to stick with it and again like that's so hard these days to show and cultivate that patience within yourself because the world we live in now is is insanely impatient um everyone has to be perfect all the time or you need things need to change 
Um, and that's just that's not reality. That's just not reality. Question your questionable thinking. <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> uh, well, good deal, man. Uh, I had a topic, but you know that one was a lot better. So <laughs> well, we can we can cover yours. Uh, we can cover yours uh, on Monday. I do have a quick question though, since we're we're going to keep this short, but I, I was thinking this is totally off topic. But some people asked. Some people actually do say they like our college football talk. So I was saying, like, if you guys, you guys play Minnesota right this weekend? Yeah, we do. Would you? Would you rather? Ooh, if for I rec- like would you rather? Yeah, for we for a rec- segment. For a recruiting standpoint, okay. Mm-hmm. Would you rather have a barn burner with Minnesota and like lose like a last second field goal, go to a bowl game and win, or would you prefer to beat Minnesota? And go to the championship game and get blown out by Ohio State by fifty. <laughs> I think it's a legit question. No, it's a good one. It's a good one. Um, I mean, I can't have those kind of would you rather's because in Tennessee, like we're just now bowl eligible. We're just trying to like end off the season by beating Vandy for the first time in a few years. So um, I don't get to have those conversations with myself. Yeah. Well, I think it's beat Minnesota. You just take it one step at a time, man. I'm right there with you. You got to, you know, because in my head, I'm like, well, there's a, a slight chance we could scheme Ohio State and keep it close. I don't know. Always, they're so much more talented than we are that there's no chance. I mean, their <laughs> third string is like four stars, you know. It's like, know. By that, speaking of that third quarter analogy, it's like by then our guys are all, you know, we might be okay in the starting lineup, but then after that it just starts going – they're so big and they're so athletic and fast. But um, uh, yeah, I want the shot at them, man. I'm a, I'm just I'm that deal. way. I want to like scrap. That. I want to go down and, and give it a shot. I mean, I was there with the time they did beat us fifty to nothing. Oh, I remember early. you texted oh. me and I felt bad. Yeah, it was uh, man. But it's uh, I remember. It's not going well. A basketball <laughs> program. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Anyway, <laughs> lots of no. good football. Yeah, I know. Lots Somebody of good saying, football. With Wisconsin, it's kind of weird because, like, the Badgers nation right now. I mean, like, my buddy was the other day. He's like, you know, why don't we just go in every year and pencil Wisconsin in between 10 to 15th ranked best team in the country and just not invest so hard because that's usually what just happens. You know, yeah, we're never going to be better. I love to invest. It's a lot of investment, man. Oh, man. Uh, well, good, man. Well, Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. Same to you. Tell the family I said uh, hello and happy Thanksgiving to them. And I will uh, I'll talk to you on Monday and I'll see you next week. Yeah, let's do it, man. Stop by happy Thanksgiving to all and uh, all that other stuff. Oh, if you like the podcast, please go give it a good review at uh, iTunes. You know, and if it's your first one and you didn't like it, you know. <laughs> Come back and listen to at least seven or eight more. Because yeah, you're, you're bound shot, to find man. one that you kind of like. Yeah, get out of your angst and just like. <laughs> hey, you know what? We're not for everybody, and that's okay. No, it's probably good. Yeah, yeah it is good. I'm that's all good with that, man. If you made it this far, you've already shown you have a tremendous amount of patience. So apply that same patience you have for this podcast to your own training plan. Have, have a wonderful Thanksgiving, and we'll see you on